This uh, welcome to the council time agenda for September 20. This is Wednesday. Uh, we have just finished two work sessions. It is 1013 AM and we begin with public comment uh, the, this would be comment on agenda items only. And that being the agenda that is, uh, before us on today's council time, uh, staff, do you see anyone? Online or in the hearing room who wishes to speak. Chair, I don't see anybody in the hearing room um, and nobody is raising their hand online. Either. Okay, we'll give it just a moment to be sure that that is in fact the case. And apparently it is. So let's move to old business. Is there a motion for approval of the minutes of September 13? Chair. Yes, I, I would actually propose amending the minutes slightly and just a, a brief explanation um, relative to the comments, some of the comments that I made down towards, I don't know if you can scroll down there a little bit. Uh, where is it at there? Yes, so Councilor Young recognized a remarkable citizen in our community. Chris, now uh, this is where the correction lies. Are, it's right oh, in the I middle of the page there. Reports. Thank you. Yeah, so Chris Tobobbin's name is, is not correct in there. I would recommend changing that and then modifying it slightly because Chris is not actually with Casper Recovery Housing, um, but it is involving the existing facility that is Casper Recovery Housing. So I have that text somewhere. I, I, do we want to? I mean, are we comfortable just changing that they're very minor changes or would you like me to actually read the suggestion that I made for the change? Would you please read your, your suggestion and then we'll get it right. What's that? I didn't hear that. Would you please read okay. your suggestion and then we'll right. get it right. Uh, Michelle just disappeared. I had sent it to her. So let me see if I can find it real quick. I apologize. I should have been ready for this. She's not around, is she? Michelle Belcott, maybe? No? No, Michelle uh, Finning. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I think I found it. Okay, great, yes, okay. All right, so what I would like to change it to is Councilor Young recognized a remarkable citizen in our community, Chris Tobobbin, with the correct spelling who is working to keep the recovery housing in Hazeldale, known as Casper, from closing after its implement or impending closure was announced. He also expressed gratitude for all those that sacrificed their time to make our community a better place. And how do you spell uh, Chris's last name? It's T-H-O-B-A-B-E-N. T-H-O? I'm sorry, I didn't catch. B, you. Yep. Uh, B A B E N. Okay. Staff, do you have any questions on those that wording from Councillor Young? Or did you get it? It sounded like Councillor Young may have already sent it to Michelle so she can take the verbiage from that email and update it. Okay, very good. Thank you, Councillor. Um, is it um is everyone okay with that edit or should, do we need to vote on that, Leslie? Yes, I would move approval of the minutes with that change. I'll second that. that. Thank you. Second that. Any, any further edits or changes? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed nay. That is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. New business. Uh, Jordan, pro proclamation on National 4-H Week. <clears throat> uh, okay, there we go. 
Apologies on that. Uh, for the record, Jordan Bogey. Um, yes, so um, Washington State University, uh, Clark County Extension uh, sent this proclamation over. They would like uh, the council to proclaim October 1st through 7th as National 4-H week. Um, and so they provided uh, some language to us and uh, we went back and forth with them a little bit to uh, have them give us a little more detail on some of the activities that 4-H does. Um, but uh, so this is, this is it for the, the council right here, um, proclaiming uh, the first week in October as National 4-H week. I appreciate the data in there and give it a thumbs up for uh, using as a proclamation by council. Any other thumbs up? Thumbs up from me and I'd be happy to present this when it comes up. Very good. So that's three and we're on. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Let's move to Lacamas Lake Management Plan and interlocal agreement. I don't know which staff member is going to present that. Chair, our clean water team is approaching the area for, to present this topic. Very good. Thank you. Good morning, councillors, uh, county manager, deputy county manager. Uh, for the record, I'm Priya Danapal, uh, deputy public works director for Clark County. And today I have with me uh, Ken Lader, the county's public works director, on, who's listening in virtually. And in person, we have uh, Devin Rosterfer, our new clean water division manager, and Jeff Schnobel, uh, the county's stormwater infrastructure manager. Um, I also want to let the council know we have the City of Camas's Public Works Director in the audience today, and he's here to show his support for the topic uh, of discussion today. And he's also available to answer any questions on behalf of the City of Camas pertaining to today's topic uh, if the council wishes to do so. So today we have two goals for our time with council. Uh, the first one is to provide a status update of the new draft Camas Lake Management Plan, which is scheduled to come out for public comment this Friday. Uh, the City of Camas has developed a draft lake management plan and would like to get feedback from an input from all their partnering agencies, including Clark County, before finalizing the plan and its recommendations. The second goal is to request council support to formally begin working towards an interlocal agreement uh, with the City of Camas to support long-term implementation of the Lake Management Plan. Uh, finalizing the recommendations of the Lake Management Plan and also the terms and conditions of the ILA is a long process. Uh, that's going to be months in the making. Uh, the aim is to achieve this end goal with the cooperation and coordination of all the partnering agencies. And today's council meeting is the first of many meetings we are expecting to have to serve this purpose. Uh, with that being said, I request Devin Rostrofer to provide an overview of the lake management plan and how it relates to Clark County. Great, thank you. For the record, my name is Devin Rostrofer and I'm the new Clean Water Division Manager. Um, to support the request, I'm gonna provide some history and background information on the county's involvement in the Lacamas watershed. So the Lacamas watershed is on Washington State's polluted waters list for high bacteria levels, warm water temperatures, low dissolved oxygen, and pH pollution, which drives the need from the state to develop a water cleanup plan. Um, in 2021, um, the Department of Ecology invited Clark County uh, to participate in a water quality assessment focused on the Lacamas watershed with the goal to identify which creeks were contributing the highest levels of pollution to Lacamas Lake. The geographic boundary for ecology study includes the 67 square mile watershed, 88% uh, of which is under the county's jurisdiction. And the geographic boundary for ecology study ends where Lacamas Creek enters Lacamas Lake. So this is where Camas comes in. Simultaneously, the city of Camas received a grant to begin a comprehensive lake management plan to address harmful algal blooms in Lacamas Lake. And the timing of this grant study was perfect because it enabled Camas to study the areas directly east, west, and south of the lake that weren't included in Ecology's initial study. 
And Camus' study also included an evaluation of in-lake conditions and different management options to help improve lake water quality. The county has served as a partner in both ecology study and Camus' lake management plan, and everyone has been working together to coordinate those two studies. Um, and really, the county has been providing technical input and monitoring resources, um, which have been incorporated throughout both sets of work. So together, uh, the Clean Water Division sees ecology's assessment and Camus' <coughs> lake management plan as two tools that will work together to provide a comprehensive set of recommendations for both watershed management and in-lake management. And while we're still waiting on ecology's assessment later this year, um, we are asking for your support to begin working towards uh, formalizing our interlocal agreement with CAMIS to get ready for the implementation phase. In total, we estimate that the Clean Water Division is investing upwards of $750,000 annually on water quality activities in the Lacamas watershed. This includes annual inspection and maintenance on public stormwater facilities as well as private stormwater facilities along with um, capital projects and stream monitoring. Some of the top priorities for the Lacamas watershed include continuing to implement our stormwater management plan, continuing to partner with agricultural assistance organizations to monitor and help identify properties that need help with livestock and manure management, and continuing to work with public health uh, to help implement water quality uh, and address water quality issues from septic systems. Um, looking forward, we're very eager to continue our work on stormwater and agriculture and septic support and monitoring, as well as uh, providing lake-specific education and outreach programs. So once again, thank you for our request uh, to move forward with work with CAMIS on the lake management plan. Um, and I will, I guess, now open it up for discussion or questions. Thank you. Council? Uh, just to comment, I have some concern about our going forward with a management plan with ecology's assessment not coming until later this year, you said. Um, is there any way that they can be speeded up or that we can include parts of their management plan that are finished? Or parts of their assessment, I should say, that are finished? Thank you for, sorry, this is my first time. Thank you for the uh, question, Chair Bowerman. Um, at this time, we're just requesting the ability to begin developing an interlocal agreement so that we can prepare for when the lake management plan is through the public comment phase and also um, get ready for when the source assessment from ecology comes out later this year. Um, we do see the two plans being integral to one another um, and really know that um, they're delineated by geographic boundary and that we'll have a part in both plans. Um, I don't know if Steve, you want to address that question at all about our timeline, but we've been told that um, the city of Camas is willing to take all public input, and that includes consideration of ecology's assessment results. And I understand that Steve can come here if council wishes to do so, but I can, based on my conversation with city of Camas, they confirmed that they are willing to wait to get feedback from ecology and county before finalizing the plan recommendations. Chair? Uh, yes, Councilor Young. So I'm definitely supportive. Look forward to this process. I wanted to thank Steve for coming today. And, you know, our, our biggest problems will never be solved if we don't work together. So I think this is a great example of that, and we need to do more of this. Thank you. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Councilor Marshall. Thank you. Uh, I'm fully supportive as well. I appreciate the briefing that you provided uh, was that just yesterday. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, I think with water in particular, it, uh, it, it requires collaborations between jurisdictions because the water does not really uh, follow any particular boundary. Uh, so, uh, and, and Steve, if you'd like to add anything, you know, I appreciate you coming in and uh, look forward to uh, seeing more of this as we go forward. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. So there's some significant gaps here that I think this council needs to hear about. 
I, and I, I'm not sure, uh, Chair, if you were here or not, but you kind of highlighted one of the points with your question right away. Uh, we've been waiting on this for two years. And, and we haven't seen the draft plan. Uh, they're having a meeting uh, for the, with the city and the public, uh, I think, to discuss it coming up. And it's, I want to emphasize it needs to be a draft because ecology is not done yet. And the pandemic put them way behind staffing issues, uh, put them way behind. Uh, we don't have that. We're also having a, a symposium in October. So the timing is really kind of messed up right now. Uh, so, and here's the point I really want to emphasize. We did all this years ago and Camus pulled away. Uh, they went unilaterally to do their own thing with their own consultant. Uh, they ignored uh, the interlocal agreement that the county voted to approve. I don't know why that is. I, I look forward to an honest discussion with the mayor and Steve at some point uh, because they simply pulled away. If we're going to have an interlocal agreement, we need to take into account every stakeholder's input and leadership of which the county has a huge role. <clears throat> We have 80% of the watershed. We probably have 80% of the point source pollution uh, going into the lake. And you can't come up with a lake management plan until we know exactly what we're going to do, be doing with the watershed. So I absolutely support this interlocal agreement. And we were on the verge of approving it until Camus pulled away. Uh, just a few years ago, without explanation. You know, you, you can't just take our testing ability. You can't just take our money without our input. So that's the message I have uh, for Steve uh, sitting. I'm assuming he's sitting there today. We need to get going on this. We need to work together uh, with all entities. It was the original idea to have everyone sitting around the table because we all have underlapping and some overlapping jurisdiction and we have to sit around the table so people don't point uh, their fingers elsewhere as to that's someone else's issue. Shoreline management, stormwater runoff, point source pollution in the Latimus <laughs> watershed, failed biofilters. You know, we need we need testing as a swim area, not just testing uh, whenever an algae bloom is seen. We need long-term solutions. We need action. Uh, so uh, I look forward to this continuing discussion, but the timing is really poor uh, that we, I, I don't even know if the, uh, the consultant's work is available. I asked for it. Uh, earlier this week, I still haven't seen it. I don't know that the city's even posted it on their webpage yet. I'm sure it's a lengthy document, but we need to get uh, a really firm understanding of what this one consultant has identified and then see what eco ecology has identified as well through their testing before we really can come up with a finalized lake management plan where all stakeholders participate. Thank you, you Councilman. Uh, I would uh, concur with you that uh, having ecology's assessment and the and the consultants' report is indeed important um, for our management plan at this time. I do have, um, I guess, a question uh, regarding the past. Um, if it was years ago that the interlocal agreement was um, shunned, I guess is the word, I don't know, by Camus, um, that is hopefully not even relevant at this point in time. If Camus will agree that they have no intention of doing that at this point, uh, because history does not necessarily repeat itself, thankfully. So, um, as we go forward, uh, the conversations with Camus simply need to be 
uh, honest and open, and I'm sure that we will uh, assure that that takes place. Um, are there other comments on on this uh, process? Chair? Y yes, please. Good morning. Uh, I'll, I'll chime in just very quickly. Uh, Jeff Schnabel, uh, Stormwater Infrastructure Manager for, for Clean Water. Um, I'd like to just sort of clarify a little bit. Uh, in the absence of the ILA that was contemplated a couple of years ago, um, we have continued to partner with CAMIS through this exercise of studying the lake and coming up with the draft plan that we will have coming out or they will have coming out shortly. For a little more detailed review, um, the types of support that were contemplated in that earlier ILA draft included things like technical support, review of plans, review of uh, applications for grants, those sorts of things. And so uh, at a staff level, we have continued to have those kinds of interactions and uh, we feel very confident, or I feel very confident at least that CAMIS has done due diligence as far as the studies that they've sanctioned for this uh, and they've moved forward in a way that is commensurate with the way that uh, lake management plans are developed. They, as Councilor Mebiji said, are kind of uh, multifaceted, right? So you've got some things that might be an in-lake, uh, short-term immediate band-aid that you might need to apply while you're also working on developing uh, longer-term strategies and then the strategies to stop the loading of nutrients and such from the watershed itself. So uh, those things are all ongoing um, and they are all uh, being coordinated to the extent we can. Now there is some timing, you know, that is that is challenging with some of these things. Um, however, we don't feel like there's going to be any left field recommendations from ecology when it comes to the plan that they start developing or they come out with in the, in the watershed itself, right? Uh, there's a, there's a laundry list of, of very obvious things that will likely be on that uh, recommendation list and we are already doing many of them and we can just decide kind of where to, you know, focus our efforts or prioritize going forward. So um, I, I don't think we have too much concern internally as staff that, that there will be a big split between what happens with the lake plan and the watershed plan and I do feel like this is a good time uh, for us to be pursuing again this ILA to kind of get CAMIS and the county on the same page and make sure that we're working and pulling in the same direction going forward. So appreciate it. Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I need to comment on that. Uh, I heard a, a voice first that I think was Councillor Marshall and then Councillor Medvigi. Yes. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Jeff, for that further explanation. It sounds like it maybe have been a bumpy road to get to this point, but then it also sounds like everyone's pulling in the right direction at this point. There'll be an opportunity, you know, we can move forward working with on the ILA uh, at the same time the plan is getting refined and the council will have an opportunity to see all of that detailed information when it is ready. Thank you. Okay, so Madam Chair, uh, yes, let me comment on that bumpy road because that's where we're at. There wasn't a bumpy road. Uh, so the executive branch staff can't do this alone and ignore the council. The council voted unanimously to, uh, to form the agreement. And then Camus didn't sign it. And I suspect that staff continued to work on it together with Camus's staff. There is a political process here that involves policy and policy direction and policy decisions by the council. You know, I would set two criteria. One, we want more clear water. Two, we want less algae blooms. And as a third and, and byproduct is we want a healthier envi environment, not only for humans, uh, but aquatic life. You know, we set the policy, we make, we set the goals, we set the budget, whether this gets funded or not. So staff can't operate in a vacuum, nor can CAMIS. That's my point. Uh, so, as we look forward to working out an agreement, we have to, you know, we have to be included as a council 
because we're going to make budget decisions and we're going to set policy guides uh, together with uh, the other stakeholders. There was no bumpy road. Uh, unless there was a, an understanding by staff that they were going to try to cut the council out and bypass our poli policy and budget decisions. So it, these are hard discussions. We need to ferret out in this agreement. Uh, and again, I look forward to a meeting with the mayor and Steve uh, so we can have an on dis ongoing and honest discussion about what happened the last time that caused this city to not sign on to the agreement. Chair? Yes, please, Councilor Young. Uh, I would just like to add that you don't ignore the past for sure. And I you know I would like to look at the past to make sure we don't repeat the same mistakes, but I don't want to look into the past to dig up old wounds or anything like that. I want to focus on moving forward and collaborating with each other and, and having a good open, and I agree with Councillor Medvedge, there it needs to be open and a, a you know, fully transparent process and, and all parties involved in that. And um, I, that's the sense that I get from the discussion that we're having is that that is the path forward on this. Um, so again, I mean, we don't ignore the past, but I also want to, specifically focus on the future and, and positive relationships with all parties involved on this. Thank you. And I do feel, this is Kathleen Chair, I do feel the need to share our staff has always been at the table, has always worked with council on this. There was zero delay, intentional ignoring anybody, and they continue to do that through the last couple of years, and they will continue to do that for us. So I wanna make that clear that our staff is great and they will do what they can. And yes, ILA will have to be approved by council and we'll get there and bring it forward so that you guys can set that policy direction. But I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. Uh, while I agree, we can appreciate the past. Our staff was ready to go and at the table. So this was not at any fault of our own um, work that were done. And Councilor Mabaji, I appreciate your comments. I just want to make sure that that is clear because I don't want you, the public, the city, or anybody thinking our staff was not executing what council's desire was. And my impression is that that will continue to be the case based on what is item 3.2 on our agenda today, because it is here it is being discussed openly as it should be. Um, if, is there anything else on this issue or is there anything that you need from council today in order to keep the discussion on the ILA active and moving forward with, uh, the consultants report and ecologies report when it's available? At this point, we're requesting council to give us a nod to proceed working towards the ILA. Um, I also would like to respond to one item that Councillor Medvedji brought up. Um, the draft Lacamas uh, Lake Management Plan is available for public beginning this Friday. So on Friday, we should be able to share that with council uh, when it's made available. Um, so those are the two points I wanted to make. Uh, other than giving a nod to working towards uh, the ILA with CAMIS, uh, we have no other requests at this time. Chair, and just one will, more comment. Yes, of course. And I was just going to ask, how will that report be made available? Is that on the Clean Water website? I, I think it would, in the city of CAMIS's website, um, and we can work through making sure the council receives it through Kathleen. Yeah, and we can check periodically. I, I have been, you know, throughout this week when we learned about it and it's not posted yet. So like Priya mentioned, if they're posting on Friday, I'll send out a link to everybody with that posting. Excellent. And Councillor Young, was that you who had a comment? Uh, thank you. Um, you know, one of the things that Councillor Medvedi mentioned does, does strike me though. We have the draft plan now. We haven't heard from ecology. 
So I would like a commitment that if there are any major discrepancies that we're willing to incorporate those. I don't want this thing to be fully baked before we get that information. Um, and, you know, a, a full conversation about it so that we can address that when it is released. Thank you for the comment, uh, Councilor Young. Um, on, uh, based on my conversations with the City of Kansas Public Works Director, uh, they don't have a set deadline. They are willing to wait until they get um, inputs and feedback from Clark County and Ecology, which includes the study by Ecology as well, before we finalize the recommendations. And so it, it remains a draft until that information is available. Is that correct? Correct. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I am, I'm sorry. Yeah, Can Madam just... Chair, I, I am I'm heartened by uh, the discussion uh, of all the councilors, and and once again, we did agree as a full council previously, uh, and so you know I have been periodically checking for that draft uh, to see if it's posted by Camus. So I understand it still is not, but my question to uh, our director and staff. Do you have it? Are you sorting through it? I understood from our one-on-ones that that you were you had it available. It just wasn't available to the public or at this point to the council. We have the draft recommendations available to the staff, um, but it is not made available to public or even we don't even have I think the draft finalized version of the draft document is not available until Friday. Okay, thank you. And just also to um, clarify Councillor Young's request or question about it will maintain uh, or continue to be a draft until the ecology study is done. But based on what I'm hearing, that may not be the case if ecology's testing is not done till the end of the year. Is that have you heard if the city of Camas is looking at, you know, getting the input, understanding their flexibility, but are they willing to continue it to be a draft until the end of the year? And maybe you don't know that, and that might be something um, the feedback that can be provided to them. Thank you, Kathleen. We can confirm that with um, Steve Wall, the Director of Public Works of Canvas. I will give a thumbs up personally for proceeding toward resolution of the interlocal agreement. Uh, are there others who concur with that to give a thumbs up to? Uh, our, our staff. I agree. Yep. We are there. Thank you so much. And is there any anything else that needs to be added by staff or by council as a, a point in going forward to that end? Madam or, Chair, I just want to emphasize yes. that lake management plans are not a unilateral endeavor. It is all the stakeholders moving forward. That's why you know, the continuing it as a draft, getting all the data in, getting all the collaboration with the stakeholders, and most importantly, ecology as well. You know, the RCO, uh, the county has done a lot of conservation around the lake. We made pretty much round lake possible. Uh, we have a stake in this. You know, at the bottom of the lake is owned by someone different than the, than the surface of the lake. Uh, we have shoreline management around the lake. We are a stakeholder and we've got a lot to contribute uh, as far as the watershed, cleaning up the watershed and restoring it and protecting it. So that, I just wanna emphasize that point. This isn't a unilateral endeavor teed off by Camus. This is lake management with all the stakeholders. So I'm hoping that that theme uh, gets uh, pushed by, by our staff. Yes, indeed, and we are not giving the thumbs up to just Camus or just anybody going ahead. We are giving thumbs up to the, the collaborative effort. Um, okay, I think that is it on this topic for today as new business. Um, and thank you for a good discussion. Clearly, we need a lot more discussion on this in the future. Uh, even after Friday, as the draft is uh, posted. Councillor reports. Are there any councillor reports today? Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor Mabinji. 
very briefly, I didn't want to do it last night, but I, I did meet with the director for the Council for the Homeless yesterday. And uh, basically, as she goes around and, and her team uh, will go to other counselors and, and the mayors to get their input on uh, the updating of uh, our homeless action plan. Uh, so that's a an iterative process. And I just wanted to emphasize a couple of points that we're trying to emphasize with everyone else. This is not a council for the homeless plan. It is a Clark County plan uh, that will involve all the stakeholders. Uh, you know, we met for over an hour. One of the high points that I've been trying to push on over the years, and I think we are making some progress on, but I highlighted with her, and I just want to restate it here. The biggest gap I see uh, in shelter spaces, if you will, is that we, you know, we track through HMIS the available shelter spaces. You know, we have hotel vouchers. We have a, a wide assortment of tools to house people rapidly. There are a lot of different uh, efforts by nonprofits and the counties and the cities, but there's a gap between that and our mental health available beds, our uh, drug addiction beds, short and long-term treatment, detox. We really need to connect that gap so we can identify every bed available to the homeless that may involve mental health or drug addiction or whatever they need in their life to be exited from their condition. So there is a gap there. I know we did hire an additional person with their, our community services uh, to kind of bridge some of that mental health gap, uh, but, but we have to create a, eliminate that divide uh, between the homeless services and drug addiction and mental health services because they so uh, much overlap. Uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to highlight that because we do need to make some uh, progress uh, in our homeless action plan in that area. Thank you, Councillor. Chair, I actually have a follow-up question for the counselor. Uh, first, I appreciate all the your work, work you've done in this arena. I'm, I'm wondering what the uh, time frame is for uh, completion of that action plan. Well, it, it's act, it's a, it's kind of like the comp update. It's a multi-year uh, process. We won't even receive the state's guidance uh, until I think next summer. Uh, all of the mayors and city councils will have a schedule of outreach by the Council for the Homeless, which is our uh, basically our cornerstone for getting this plan in place. Uh, we can get a more detailed uh, timeline from uh, Michael or Vanessa uh, to all the councilors, but it's it's a lengthy process. Thank you. Chair, just to add to that too, and, and Councilor Medvedge, he knows this very well, but I think there's a lot of people that may not be aware is that the homeless action plan was actually already due. It's still in effect as it currently exists, but there were changes coming down from commerce that are not finalized. And that's what he was referring to is we're waiting for those changes that they're bringing before we update the plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there other Councilor reports? I just wanted to mention that the auditor's office for the county has prepared the 2022 financial trends monitoring report. This is a very interesting report. Online right now are the reports prior to that particular uh, one. Uh, it has just come out for uh, the council to read and, and probably staff, so it will undoubtedly be posted before long. Those who are really interested in the finances of the county, I recommend that report uh, highly. It's, uh, it is very informative. Um, in fact, it, it covers, just to give you an idea, um, about five major topics, which include um, tax revenue per capita, well, it, revenue expenditures, 
our operating position, our debt, and the economic base and details in each of those areas. So it's uh, uh, very informative. Other counselor reports. Work session requests. There's none today. Thank you. Policy issues. I will ask Jordan to provide um, updates and also Amber, if you want to just quickly touch on the camping ordinance, that would be great. Okay, there we go. Um, so just want to give you a little bit of an update. Um, so tomorrow will be uh, a month with the county. So I am still working on getting up to speed, uh, meeting with different folks in the various departments to uh, understand the, the, you know, the purview uh, and kind of key issues that are going on. Um, I've been meeting uh, with, with counselors, most of you individually, uh, to try to get a sense of some of your current Priorities, some of the things that have been coming up uh, for me to look into include um, some different broadband connectivity uh, resources and issues coming up, um, including some guidance that's going to be coming from the from the state um, Department of Commerce here, hopefully soon. Um, there's been some questions uh, related to some of the things that were discussed today in terms of agricultural land, um, resource land, cluster development rules. I've been asked to um, look at uh, some different um, issues around, you know, zoning and, and development. Um, there, there seems to be an interest in that among the council. I have been uh, starting to sit in on, on some of the uh, committee meetings, uh, including ECHO and Law and Justice, um, so getting up to speed on the housing and um, homelessness issues, uh, as well as meeting with our state lobbyists to uh, understand sort of uh, what's going to be happening with the upcoming legislative session and uh, some and they are hoping to have some priorities developed um, by the council uh, sort of set by early November um, so that we can uh, let them know what you know what what council would like to prioritize uh, for the upcoming uh, short session uh, in early next year so those have been some of the things that I've been uh, working on, uh, and then I'm sure there will be more things to, to come up. Um, but those those generally are uh, are what I've been looking into so far. Any other policy issues from another staffer? Good morning, Chair. I will add to um, the conversation we had last week about the unlawful camping ordinance that was in the final phase of review. That has been completed with the two departments that I was reaching out to last week and will be on council time for council's um, feedback on 920, on 927. So we'll have that in front of you um, before we move forward through our final stages, which would be public hearing after getting council's feedback. Madam Chair, can I ask Amber a quick question on that? You know, of course. we're reading uh, and hearing about, and we, we heard it at Echo, and it, maybe it met, was mentioned at Law and Justice as well. You know, the city is about to open. They're now putting the infrastructure in place for that new safe uh, camping spot right down on Esther, mm -hmm. just a few blocks from our, our campus. When will that thousand foot prohibition go into effect by the city for unlawful camping uh, around that safe that new safe site do you know when that will be effective good question councilor mevaji i remember um, in our previous echo meeting when jamie was talking about that with um officer shaver said that uh, we were talking about once that's completed then the thousand foot buffer goes in so then at that point um the ordinance gives CCSO the ability to site on our campus, so on our county properties. So then that would be a partnership that we would need to work out at that time with Vancouver um, between CCSO and BPD, how that looks like for this jurisdiction down here. But our ordinance gives our officers the ability to um, site on our county campuses. So still TBD when that goes in, we'll work through those logistics. Leslie, I know you were looking at the 
format of the ordinance. Is there anything you wish to add? Thank you, Chair Bowerman. Um, I, I will just say that the PA's office has reviewed it and um, it is in a format, I believe, that will be ready for council to provide input um, and uh, we will discuss it at next week's council time. Thank you. Very good. That's good to hear. Thank you. Anything else on policy issues? Okay. Uh, we will take a, uh, a brief uh, break and recess uh, for executive session. One on pending litigation, RCW 42.30.110, paren 1, paren I. That one is 30 minutes. Then another one on collective bargaining, that is 10 minutes. Uh, Leslie or Kathleen, will there be any after action reports? Anticipated? Not today. No after action. Okay. Nevertheless, we will come back to council time at the conclusion of the executive sessions in order to close out the meeting for today. So that is a 40 minute period. Uh, it is 1058. Let's meet back at 1140. We'll be meeting back on this uh, uh, website. And for those of you who might be in the hearing room, it will be uh, at the regular council time um, discussion period, not uh, coming out of executive session. So with that, we are uh, able to uh, move out into executive session and see you later. Um, Chair Bearman has asked us to announce that the executive sessions are going to be extended for an additional 10 minutes and open session is going to reconvene at 1150. Thank you so much.